Dear students, good morning all of you. We are now dealing with cell physiology and by now you might have learned about the structure of the cell and cell junctions. So today we will discuss about the cell transport system. Okay. The nourishment of this cell with required nutrients, water, electrolytes and the excretion of waste materials from it are done because of the transport mechanism present in the cell membrane. The fluid and electrolytes on either side of the cell membrane are exchanged through specific channels or proteins or carrier molecules present in the plasma membrane. And this transport mechanism is responsible for the difference in composition between the intracellular fluid and the extracellular fluid. You know about the structure of the cell membrane and the components of cell membrane as carbohydrates, proteins and phospholipids and you've learned about the fluid mosaic model and how these components are arranged in the cell membrane, how the hydrophilic and hydrophobic ends of phospholipids are arranged. Okay, so presuming that you know all about this, I am going further. The cell transport occurs basically by means of two mechanisms passive mechanism and active mechanism. Passive transport is a process where the substances move from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. That is the substances move down the concentration gradient or electrical gradient without any expenditure of energy. It is also known as diffusion or downhill movement. Here no energy is required for the movement of substances. Okay. We know that diffusion is a random movement of molecules according to a chemical gradient and the energy for diffusion is derived from the normal kinetic energy of motion. Here in cell transport, the diffusion occurs either through intermolecular spaces or in combination with a carrier protein. Thus, the diffusion are of two types, simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion. The movement of substances through openings in the cell membrane without the help of a carrier protein is simple diffusion. And this simple diffusion can occur through a lipid layer or a protein layer. Thus, the simple diffusion can be a lipid diffusion or a channel diffusion. Okay. So, the first is simple diffusion through lipid layer. The lipid layer of cell membrane is permeable only to lipid soluble substances like oxygen, carbon dioxide, alcohol, etc. And next is simple diffusion through protein layer. The protein layer is permeable to water soluble substances, mostly electrolytes. Okay, so the diffusion through protein layer uh, occurs through different kinds of ion channels or protein channels. Protein channels are lined by integral protein molecules and the diffusion of water, electrolytes and other substances which are insoluble in lipids and hence impermeable through lipid layer occurs through the protein channels. And the characteristic feature of the protein channels is that they are selectively permeable. Each channel permits only one type of ion to pass through it. For example, sodium channels allow only sodium ions to pass through it. Potassium channels permit only potassium ions to pass through it. Chloride channels allow only chloride ions to pass through it and likewise. So these channels are named after the ions which are permitted to diffuse through it. Okay. And some of the protein channels continuously remain open and some of the channels are opened only when required. That is, majority of the time they remain closed and are opened only when required. So, the continuously open channels are called ungated channels and the closed channels which are opened only when required are called gated channels. Okay. So, the gated channels or the channels which open only when required are of three types. Voltage gated channels, ligand gated channels, and mechanically gated channels. Voltage gated channels are those channels which open whenever there is a change in the electrical potential. That is, they respond to electrical stimuli. For example, the resting membrane potential of the cells 
are in the range of minus 90 millivolt to minus 70 millivolt. It varies in case of muscle cell, nerve cell, etc. So generally, it can be said as minus 90 to minus 70 millivolt. So whenever there is an increase in the potential, that is the negative charge inside the cell is decreased, the negativity is reduced, there is a loss in the negative charge inside the cell, the sodium channels, the voltage created sodium channels open and allow the sodium ions to enter the cell. And when uh, this potential inside the cell increases and reaches a positive value, the voltage gated potassium channels open and allow the potassium ions to go out of the cell into the extracellular fluid. Okay. So, when the voltage increases and the negative charge of the cell reduces from minus 90 millivolt to some minus uh, 75 or minus 70 millivolt, the voltage created sodium channels open and allow the entry of sodium ions from the extracellular fluid into the cell. And when this negative charge keeps on losing, that is when it approaches a positive value, the potassium channels, the voltage gated potassium channels open and allow the potassium ions to move out of the cell into the extracellular fluid. So that is how the voltage gated channels function. Next is ligand gated channels and these are the channels which open in the presence of some hormonal substances. Uh, that is they respond to a chemical stimuli and a ligand is the chemical substance which binds to the channel. Okay. So for example, uh, the transmission of impulses through neuromuscular junction. You know what a neuromuscular junction is, the junction between a nerve and a muscle. So at the axon terminal uh, in the presynaptic membrane there are vesicles containing acetylcholine. The chemical substance and uh, when impulses reach the axon terminal these vesicles break and the acetylcholine are released and this acetylcholine moves through the presynaptic membrane and reaches the synaptic cleft it then binds to the receptors in the postsynaptic membrane and so when this acetylcholine binds to the receptors in the postsynaptic membrane the sodium channels in the postsynaptic membrane are opened and allows the passage of sodium ions from the extracellular fluid into the junction, into the neuromuscular junction. Okay, so the presence of acetylcholine, a chemical, uh, induces the opening of sodium ions in the postsynaptic membrane. So that is a ligand gated channel. Okay, so in the presence of acetylcholine, the sodium uh, channels in the postsynaptic membrane are opened and the sodium ions are permitted to enter the postsynaptic membrane from the extracellular fluid. So this is an example of ligand gated channel. Okay. Next is mechanically gated channels. These are the channels that are opened by some mechanical factors like pressure, movement, etc. For example, the channels present in the passive in copper cells. You know what a passive in copper cell is? It is the receptor for pressure. So when a passive in copper cell is subjected to pressure, it is compressed and there will be deformation in score fiber leading to the opening of sodium channels and thereby the development of receptor potential. So here the mechanical action the compression of the core fiber has resulted in the opening of sodium channels and hence it is a mechanically gated sodium channel. Okay. Another example is receptor cell of organ of cotta. You know organ of cotta is a receptor organ in ear. So there are hair cells in the organ of cotta and there are cilia in the hair cells of organ of cotta. When the sound waves are there, the sound waves cause the movement of the cilia and the hair cells in the organ of cotti resulting in the opening of potassium channels leading to the development of receptor potential. So here another mechanical action the movement of hair cells has caused the opening of potassium channels. So 
these potassium channels are mechanically gated potassium channels okay so some sort of mechanical action has resulted in the opening of these uh, ionic channels and hence they are called mechanically gated channels applied physiology with respect to ion channels are because of mutation of genes encoding these ion channels there can be sodium channel disease potassium channel disease or chloride channel disease and in the sodium channel disease there will be muscle spasm and due to the improper functioning of sodium channels in the kidneys there will be little syndrome which is characterized by increased osmotic pressure in the blood as well as hypertension the potassium channel disease results in cardiac failure inherited deafness in the newborns there will be epileptic seizures or convulsions and in chloride channel disease renal stone formation will be there the cystic fibrosis will be there uh, cystic fibrosis is the condition where the normal thin mucus will become thick and copious obstructing the passages in respiratory system as well as digestive system okay so far we have seen the simple diffusion through lipid layer and protein layer next is facilitated diffusion here the transport of substances occur with the help of carrier proteins the difference of facilitated diffusion from the simple diffusion through protein channel is that here the substances with larger molecular size are transported so those water soluble substances which cannot pass through the protein channels because of their larger molecular size are transported with the help of carrier proteins in facilitated diffusion for example the transport of larger molecules like glucose amino acids etc and so so what happens in a facilitated diffusion is that the carrier protein has a binding receptor site for the larger molecule to be transported so when this larger molecule gets attached to the receptor site there occurs a weak binding between the molecule and the receptor and it causes a conformational change in the carrier protein so this carrier protein opens to the opposite side and releases the molecule to the opposite side and the rate at which the substance is transported depends on the rate at which the carrier protein can undergo conformational change okay this we can say that diffusion is of three methods simple diffusion through lipid layer simple diffusion through protein layer and facilitated or carrier mediated diffusion now let's see the factors affecting the rate of diffusion first is permeability of cell membrane when the permeability of cell membrane increases the rate of diffusion increases next is body temperature when the body temperature increases the thermal motion of molecules increases and thus the rate of diffusion also increases next is concentration gradient or electrical gradient of the substances across the cell membrane when the concentration gradient increases the rate of diffusion increases then solubility of the substance when the solubility of the substance increases the rate of diffusion also increases so the rate of diffusion is directly proportional to these four factors next is thickness of the cell membrane when the cell membrane becomes thick the diffusion of the substances becomes slow so the rate of diffusion is inversely proportional to thickness of the cell membrane next is size of the molecules when the molecular size increases the diffusion rate decreases likewise the size of ions when increases the diffusion rate decreases but this is not always true because sodium ions are having a smaller size when compared to potassium ions uh, but potassium ions are diffused at a faster rate when compared to sodium ions this is because sodium ions are having a property of gathering the water molecules around it because of this the diffusion of the sodium ions is slowed down a bit when compared to potassium ions okay then charge of ions when the charge of the ion becomes greater the rate of diffusion becomes less 
that is uh, the calcium ions are diffused at a slower rate when compared to sodium ions okay so these last four factors thickness of the cell membrane size of the molecule size of ions and charge of ions uh, these four factors inversely affect the rate of diffusion the rate of diffusion is inversely proportional to these four factors okay there are some other types of passive transport mechanisms in addition to diffusion they are bulk flow filtration and osmosis in bulk flow what happens is there will be greater movement of substances from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure so here the substances move according to the pressure gradient for example the exchange of gases in lungs in filtration there will be movement of both water and solutes from a region of higher hydrostatic pressure to a region of lower hydrostatic pressure so here the weight of the fluid becomes the key factor for example the filtration that happens in the glomerula of kidney as part of urine formation you know about the glomerular filtration that happens in the kidney okay then osmosis in osmosis there will be movement of solvent from lower concentration of solutes to higher concentration of solutes through a semi permeable membrane it can be an endosmosis where the solvent moves into the cell and or an exosmosis where the solvent moves out of the cell okay to conclude there are two basic mechanisms of cell transport passive transport and active transport here in this session we have seen in detail about the passive transport and the next class we will resume with the active transport okay thank you